back in December I believe it was rich and he was very very impressive. Leon comes out he's been kind of an in and outer he's in the blue trunks in the black trimmed with uh, white is Marquez. Leon has uh, he has fought some good guys he's got a great chin he retired Jaime Nava but uh, he wins some loses some he's uh, may not be as dedicated as he should be I don't know. Well he really can't get any kind of a streak together it's like you said he wins a couple then loses Nick has kind of gone along that way but he's never been stopped and it will provide a good test I think here for Marquez. I thought it was interesting Tom at the introductions there was barely a ripple of applause for Marquez when he was introduced but if what we saw in Vegas was oh. no illusion of that. 90 machine, beat Israel Gonzalez he was unbelievable that night. He, he fought so well and he appeared technically outstanding for this stage in his career and with a very hard punch and extremely accurate anxious to see his development since then Tommy has fought one more time here at the uh, Great Western Forum he fought in January 30th he knocked out uh, Romulo Ochoa in one round but the, he lost his first fight did uh, Marquez oh, look at that. right hand down goes Leon I mean Leon may not get up six seven he's up is up as if somebody prodded him. Boy. Just that quick. This is what obviously it was no illusion in Vegas, Tom. This kid can fight, Marquez. And he can punch in an overhand ride, and Leon had better get on his bicycle if he wants to see round two. Marquez has got uh, good night Irene all over his face. He's in the black trunks, overhand right, and it dropped Sanchez Leon. Like somebody hit him with a two by four. You know, I'm looking at Marquez. You know who he reminds me of? Facially? Bobby Chacon? Indeed. Right on. Doesn't he look like yeah. Bobby Chacon? God yeah. love him. <laughs> what a great champion Bobby was, but a great fighter. Was this, I think the speaking pitch of him. Right, John Bob looks a lot like him. He sure does. Oh, what a good guy. Very oh, handed. I didn't know if you were going to come up with that. The guy who knows who that. Light flyweight. <laughs> guy from Siam who was the champion in 1961. <laughs> Tom still can't get over, folks. If you don't know what he's talking about, then I got the phone king fetch right in a, in a quiz that he was giving me when he said it was the flyweight champion in 1960. <laughs> Marquez very reserved here. Yes. He's not going in wild, Tom. No. After that knockdown. Not going crazy, still looking for his spots. I started to mention when he scored that knockdown that he lost his first fight. That was by disqualification. But since then, he's run off nine consecutive victories. And he lands another solid right hand on the chin of uh, Sanchez Leon, who went down early in this round and uh, bounced right back up when it appeared for a brief moment that he wasn't going to be able to recover. But he has and uh, weathered the storm and uh, a very impressive first round for Marquez and I guess in retrospect kind of impressive for this guy Sanchez who took a real shot went down heavily rolled over and got back up. Yeah and he looks pretty good in his corner Tom as they attend to him. I saw him spitting blood as soon as he was knocked down. That was a tremendous shot uh, but he looks well recovered but watch this right hand. That is just a solid shot side of the face and he was hurt. Boy, what a, I mean, hit him on time. Well, what Beautiful. a right hand, huh? That's a counterpunch deluxe. He just pulled the trigger on that counterpunch beautifully. And yet, this young man, Leon, was able to weather the storm, and he's come back, and you look across the way at young Juan Manuel Marquez. He's 21. Interestingly, in his corner is Rudy Tellers. You know what Rudy does for a living? He makes mouthpieces for fighters. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. I'm going to bring you up to date <laughs> on all this stuff. <laughs> Round number two, it's scheduled for 10. These youngsters are featherweights. Of course, probably the best thing that Marquez has going for him in his corner, Tom, is the astute training of the wonderful conditioner, Nacho Beristein of Mexico. I mean, uh, this guy is really an outstanding trainer. And will bring Marquez a long way, I'm sure. As Chiquita Gonzalez, of course, among others. Yeah. Well, um, Leon is obviously uh, well aware of the talents of Marquez. He's about a foot away from a pretty good fight right now. This is the 10 round debut for both of these guys tonight. Leon, remember, though, has never been stopped, Tom. And 
coming in, we were told he had a great chin, and that's why we felt that he would give Marquez a good test here. And his chin uh, was tested in round number one, and it weathered the storm. How it will do as the fight goes along, we can only wait along with you to see. That's Leon in the blue trunks. This is a wild ride in response to a wild ride thrown by Marquez. Nice jab. Leon has um, got a nice left hand that he flicks out there. One thing I noticed that I don't like about Marquez here in round two, Tom, is when uh, Leon is throwing the punch, he's kind of he's moving his head back, but in the direction of the punch. I mean, in the, and he's uh, he's not slipping the punch, and he's not going side to side, and the punches are just falling short. But that leaning back can get you in trouble. Well, he took a punch and then landed one and returned another right hand, and it kind of jolted Leon for just a moment. And he backs off. Marquez. Um, Pretty good looking hook by Leon, just that much short. Another good hook, and Marquez answers with a wild right. And these two guys, it, I get the impression, Rich, they're looking to put you away with one punch. Well, they're definitely loading up, Tom. There's no question about it. Especially, I think Leon here really wants to look for a, a something to turn what was a tide moving against him in that first round. So I think he needs a big punch here to try to get Marquez respect. This is the second round of a scheduled 10 rounder. A right hand scores for Leon and a bruising left hook comes back for Marquez to score. And he presses whatever advantage he has against Leon, moves him out to the center of the ring and backs him up against the ropes. And Leon falls into a brief clinch. Marquez is showing the ability to counter very well, even when he's hit with punches. He's managing to come back with something immediate. We're in round number two, and the seconds are ticking away. In round one, in case you just joined us, while Leon was down, floored with an overhand right, lands a good right hand of his own. They come into a clinch, and round two comes to a close. Over the years, I've seen a lot of winners on the track, Walter, Eddie, and Wallace. I know that to be a winner, you need top performance, and that's why I recommend... Round number three, featherweight scheduled for 10. Leon is in the blue. That's a Julio Sanchez Leon, knocked down by an overhand right in round number one. And Juan Manuel Marquez in the black trunks. He's got a record of nine and one in the defeat game in his very first fight. It looked like we had a little clash of heads there. Pat Russell steps between, checks the two men, no blood showing. Leon, at, um, with eight wins and four losses and five knockouts, is obviously a better fighter than his record was indicated. Yeah, he looks pretty good in there, Tom. And keep in mind, too, now that Leon is only 19 years old. So he's, you know, he's learning on the job here. He's not a guy possessed of a great long amateur record. Very young, he's a professional. Although a lot of the fighters from Mexico will start, you know, much younger than that in their professional careers. Not a bad left hand, a little uppercut. Didn't travel far, thrown by Marquez, but it caught Leon right on the chin. Yeah, Marquez really has a nice stance. When he gets into his boxing stance, take a look at how he stands. Technically very correct. It looks like he's almost out of a, a boxing textbook on how to hold your left hand up in front of your face, how to position your, your body a little bit sideways. He looks very good in there. Facially, he resembles Bobby Chacon, the newsboy out of the San Fernando Valley of another age and another time. It's a wonderful article in the uh, Daily News last week, Tom, last uh, Thursday, as they were uh, looking ahead to the Ruelas de la Hoya showdown and, and going back and reliving the Bobby Chacon, Danny Little Red Lopez uh, fight as one of the probably the greatest L.A. rivalry fight to date. And then this one, of course, Ruelas and De La Hoya, which is upcoming, uh, certainly is in that same area as far as being a great rivalry, but probably even more so in a national interest. Level. I would think so. Marquez applying the pressure, has Leon backpedaling and bouncing off the ropes. Steps in, throws a left, catches one in return. Right hand scores for Leon. Just as Rich told you, 19. Marquez is two years older at 21. Two very young fighters. Again, it appeared that uh, they banged heads. 
would like to see Marquez get a little busier here, Tom. And uh, he's doing a lot of posing in this round, a lot of jumping up on his toes. And he needs to throw that jab out. We just saw one there, and it was a good one. Yep. That's the end of round number three. fans, the Ringsiders Club will offer you select seating, complimentary parking, and exclusive Forum Club membership. Join the Ringsiders Club, see the action up close, and become a part of the finest boxing program in America. Call now. Operators are standing by. 310-673-1773. Go over in the corner with uh, the youngster, Marquez, Juan Manuel Marquez out of Mexico City. And you saw Nacho Berestein talking. There's that jab we talked just before the end of the round. He needs to do more of that. He spent too much of that round really doing nothing. A nice jab. And, of course, it was an overhand right that knocked Leon down in round number one. Dick Maestro is 82, Rich. 82. Great name in uh, boxing in terms of keeping the records here. We've uh, always enjoyed it. He's been a, a godsend at times. If you need to know who's done what in his career, Dick has always been there for you. 82 years young. And, of course, boxing lost a magnificent reporter, commentator, who in later years fought less of the sport than he did when he was recounting the, the stories and the abilities of many great fighters, including Ali and Howard Cosell died. Yes. He was uh, insufferable at times, to oh, be yes. sure. He was uh, everything you can say about an announcer. He truly was. <laughs> but he was, I tell you, he made a lot of big fights really come to life. Made them bigger than they perhaps were. Yep. And he was indeed, whatever you thought of him, he was indeed that. Make no mistake about it. All of a sudden, Marquez goes southpaw. What was that all about? I don't know, but he switched back very good. He changed his mind right away. I'm not sure what he's doing and why he's not a little busier in this fight. He, in his fight with the, with the Israel uh, Gonzalez that we saw up in Vegas, he started off fairly slowly and then picked up with each round. Yeah. Second, third, and the fourth round when he stopped, and he yeah. really got to work. But this, round, but this fight, really, it's gone the other way. He's done less every round. Yes, and in fact, uh, after that overhand right, he uh, seems to be standing there waiting for Leon to throw a punch so he can counter instead of taking the initiative. Leon is in the blue and Marquez in the black. Scheduled for 10. Could it be that because they're both going 10 for the first time that in the back of their mind why he's saying I've got a husband my strength and whatever for a bit here because I've got a long way to go. Very possible but you know these are young guys and they're in tremendous condition. I think they'd be able to go 100 rounds. Need be. But of course he's got some punching power make no mistake about it. Nine wins seven knockouts. One would assume that Marquez could uh, also be thinking, I'll put this guy away. And when he hit him with a right hand in the first round and knocked him down, gave you the impression he could do that. But Leon has got a great set of whiskers. Pat Russell is the third man in the ring. These are featherweights at 126 pounds. You know, Marquez, I mentioned he's not doing much leading with his jab, and it may be, Tom, because he landed that counter punch that scored the knockdown that he's waiting to counter here and not doing much of the leading. Could be. At any rate, the round is coming to a close. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Here, after four rounds of busy activity, he's got Marquez up by a point which means that it was a 10-8 round in round number one, and since then, Leon has more than held his own with Marquez. Is that the way you see it, Rick? Yes, Tom, I've given him a couple of rounds, and Marquez has not dominated the way that I thought he would. At least off that opening round overhand right that knocked uh, Leon down. This is round number five. They're scheduled for 10 featherweights.
Nice crowd on hand here at the Great Western Forum. Marquez in the black trunks, Leon in the blue, in case you've just joined us. And fight fans being fight fans, they were busy and a buzz with the George Foreman win over Axel Schultz in the heavyweight uh, fight up in Vegas. And of course, quite impressed with Danny Romero. We'll be talking about that a bit later as we see Mark Johnson. Romero was just sensational. In against a tough, competent champion. And as the fight went on, Romero got tough. What a great win. Crowd here is a little impatient with the lack of action, Rich Verano. Well, because Marquez is waiting to counter, and Sanchez is kind of just running around and throwing the jab out, and not much has happened. These guys are capable of putting on a good fight. Yes. And I think this may yet turn into one. Pretty good exchange. Each man landing a solid shot there. I told you that uh, Leon has got a good chin. There's no question about that. You saw a tremendous overhand right from Marquez that dropped him on the back of his lap in round number one. And after what appeared to be about five seconds of looking like he wasn't going to get up, he bounced right back up. And apparently he's been none the worse for wear. Well, Marquez, we don't know how good his chin is, but the fights we've seen him, why he has been more than able to handle the competition. One assumes he can take a good punch. Good punch. He's got nice skills. Got caught with a kind of a sweeping left hook there. Throws out a jab and Leon backpedaling. I don't know why Marquez doesn't use that jab more times. He throws it now and then. It's a good weapon for him. He's looking to load up, apparently, in counter. There's a left right driving Leon back. Round five is all but in the books. Leon misses with an overhand right. Seconds ticking away. Crowd a bit impatient for the action to pick up. We'll see what happens in a moment right after the bell. What do you get when you fly the low fare airline? Fun fares. Well, you waited so long. years of age. Marquez is 21. Marquez knocked him down with an overhand right in the first round, a thundering punch. And it looked for all the world like Leon was going to be catching an early shower, such has not been the case. Very um, tough fight to score since then. I love the comment or the, um, the note by Alan Malamud in his column in the L.A. Times today when he said it is extremely difficult to judge a fight when nobody gets knocked down and conversely it is a lot easier in the minds of judges and fans looking in to judge a fight when somebody knocks the other guy down. And I, th I certainly agree with that. Do you, Rich? Yeah, because there's something there that gives you something more to go on than just a close rounds. I mean, you can point to that knockdown as validation of what you're yeah. of what you're talking about in your scoring. Round number six. Well, Leon, having gone down in round number one, hasn't taken many backward steps since then. No, he showed a great ability to revive himself there, Tom, in the in the first round. Really, when he went down, I thought, it looks like this is it. Yeah, I didn't think. He rolled over, and I thought that was it. Russell would go to 10, and that would be the end of this one. Instead, he bounced up as if some of the 
you know, just screamed at him, and they didn't, but he just jumped right up, and he's been very, very busy since then. And I don't know but what since that round, this has been a pretty even fight. And the crowd feeling there ought to be a bit more action from these two young fighters, showing that they are not all that happy with what's going on. Number six has uh, quietly gone into the books. Round seven will be next. There it is. End of round number six. Want to remind you that um, while we were talking about Danny Romero, we want to remind you that Mark Two Sharp Johnson, who many of us think pound for pound is one of the best in any division in the world, is in against Baby Diaz. And that'll be, of course, a title defense. And there he is, Too Sharp, the young man out of Washington, D.C., who was um, bypassed. Romero, way below him in the ranking, suddenly gets a title shot and wins it. Baby Diaz, a tough competitor, but he's 31. And as Rich told you, he's been in against some awfully good guys in that division, but at 31 and against a guy that's won 21 in a row, Mark Two Sharp Johnson. That may be asking a bit too much, but it's our main event. You'll want to stay tuned for it. Promises to be a very, very good show. And watching Mark Johnson work is well worth the price of admission. Outstanding fighter will box, slug with you, he'll just do it all. Round number seven, and Leon in the blue. Marquez in the black slowly walk out to face each other. Oh, good left hand thrown by Leon, and that caught Marquez's attention, Rich. Yeah, very quick combination, Tom, and now he's opening up, and they both are. And now Marquez comes back, and all of a sudden it is the war the fans have been clamoring for. Wow. This is a little more of what we expected. I'm telling you, these guys have got a great set of whiskers, and both are being tested here in the seventh round. I don't know what got these two guys started, but I mean this round, out came Leon through a left hand that nailed Marquez, and it's been unbridled fury ever since. He just ran across the ring, landed a quick combination, and Marquez was in momentary trouble. But he fired back, Tom, and in that flurry, I think he got a little bit better the exchange, and I think he stunned Leon as well. Well, I'll tell you, it is understandable that these should... Two guys, there's another left hand by Leon. That these two... Another left, another. Back comes Marquez with the left. If these two guys stand for a couple of seconds and just look at each other, it's understandable because they have nailed each other here in round number seven. Yeah, all the boxing and the counter punching and stuff is going out the window. That's here. right. It's let's fight. And boy, what a round this has been. Each man has nailed the other. been sensational with the left hand and now he is backing Marquez up Marquez bouncing up and down I don't know about what Marquez is feeling the effects which I think he's been hurt in this round well he may not have completely recovered Tom from that very from that quick opening flurry right at the beginning of the round that uh, one big shot coming at the end of that combination was the most effective single punch in this round and Marquez might be fighting in a little bit of a fog this whole round. Yes, it looks that way to me. It's caught with the right hand, comes back with one. That left hand that Leon threw was every bit as electrifying as the overhand right. Marquez nailed him with in round number one, except it didn't send Marquez down. But I tell you, had he gone down, it would have been understandable. Because the bell ends. What a round, and the crowd loves it. They went from five rounds opposing and looking at each other to the round of the year. Boy, there's the left hand we spoke of at the round got underway, and from there it was stand back. And <laughs> boy, I'm telling you. 
just toe to toe for most of the round, Tom. And then Marquez pulls the round out with that right hand. I think he was well on the way to losing the round to Leon, and with that right hand, gets himself back on top once again. And of course, a knockdown. It's a 10-8 round you're looking at there, what it might have been a 10-9 the other way. Well, I'm still going to call it 10-9 for Marquez, uh, yeah. Tom, yeah, because I just thought Leon had, had dominated, well, maybe not dominated the round completely, but had won it clearly, I thought, and done a lot of damage. But I'll tell you once again, Leon having been down now twice, once in the opening round and a moment ago in round number seven, bounced right back up. I had to laugh. Jimmy Lennon was looking at him as you and I were, and he looked for all the world like he was just used up. And all of a sudden, when the count got to seven, boom, he snapped the mouthpiece in and jumped right up and was back in the in the fray. Interesting. 19-year-old youngster. What a corking good pair of featherweights these two guys are. Quick recuperative powers. Steps in, throws a left and a right, and then in passing, why Marquez answers with a counter punch. They gave Leon a good drenching in his corner, though, between rounds. Well, I tell you, oh, right hand, kind of a glancing one this time thrown by Marquez as Leon was moving away from it. I'm sure Leon felt that onslaught in round number seven, too, Rich. I mean that opening left hand. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed that he was able to come back and throw the right hand to put Leon down. Yeah, it was. Uh... A tribute to his conditioning, Tom. He just sucked it up after that, went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, got hit several more times during the course of the round, and still had enough there to score the knockdown. Yeah, I think it would have been understandable if he had just weathered the storm and, and gotten through the round without anything quite as dramatic as still another knockdown. But he's tough. These guys are going 10 for the first time. And of course, they're young. Slight swelling of the left eye of Marquez. Not a problem yet, Tom. Just a very slight swelling beginning to puff up a little bit. Leon has been down twice in round number one and a moment ago in round seven. Marquez in black, Leon in blue. Crowd a bit impatient in rounds of three, four, five, and six. And then suddenly they're still talking about what they saw in round seven. And these two guys now here in round eight kind of catching their second wind or trying to do so. In a quiet eighth round. For a go for broke three minutes. Round seven. Tom, sometimes after a really vicious round like the last one, the guys will try to recuperate a little in the yeah. next round. They may not be punched out, but they may just try to take a little time off, catch a breather, and come back strong for the last couple rounds. I think that's what we've seen a little bit here. They weren't going to come out with another round like the one we just saw. No, I'd have been very surprised had they been able to do that. Round eight, kind of quiet compared to round seven, obviously, comes to a close. If you've ever struggled with a handheld trimmer, you'll love this revolutionary new kind of trimmer on wheels. Just look how easy it rolls on those two big wheels and glides in any direction on this front-mounted mobile. It's perfect for trimming around rocks. As they come out for round number nine, it's scheduled for 10. We'll check Rich Morata's scorecard. He's got Marquez suddenly up by five points now. The last time we checked, I think it was about a point separating the two, and suddenly he's got this card, uh, this fight, swinging heavily in Marquez's favor. Of course, we did have the knockdown in round number seven, and yet you only scored it a 10-9, huh? Yeah, but I've given him several rounds in a row here now, Tom. Basically, because I just think he's landing more shots. The one round that I would have given to Leon was the round in which he was knocked yeah. down at the end. Yeah. Scheduled for 10, this is round number nine. Leon has been down twice, and Marquez showed you that he's not only got considerable boxing skills, but he's got a magnificent chin, because he took a shot to open up round seven that would have knocked half the people in the building down. 
no matter what weight division they're in, and he never went down, but I'm sure he was hurt. But he rallied in round seven to score a knockdown of his own. That's Marquez in black. Good left hand shown by Marquez, who has shown us some uh, nice boxing skills and punching ability in and out throughout this fight. Rich, but hasn't quite been as consistent with it as perhaps we thought he would be, although there was a nice left-right combination. In the last round at the start of it, he went a little right hand crazy, Tom, after landing the knockdown punch the previous round. Good left hand, caught Leon. You see in these exchanges, Tom, Leon may land as many shots as Marquez does, but you can see clearly that Marquez has the harder punch. And also it's evident that as John Bay Ruby pointed out in his notes, Leon has got an outstanding chin. He has taken some on the button shots, though he's gone down twice. He has taken some others that might have put him down two or three times more. He's only 19. Leon. And of course, Marquez is just 21 of his own. It's a pretty tough fight for these two kids. This young and uh, this early on in their careers. Nine and one is the record for Marquez with seven knockouts. Leon, as you can see, has been in with some tough, tough guys in this division. Has a, a record of eight and four, but five knockouts out of the eight wins. And now Marquez keeps sticking that left hand at him as he drives him across the ring and around it. They've fought into one of the few clinches they've had in this fight tonight. Well, as fighters develop time and fight for forum boxing, they will be tested, believe me. They're not going to run into a bunch of patsies to build up a uh, record. Uh, Alfred Ankema, our last right. show, is, yep. uh, is proof of that. Yep. You know, if, if you're a good looking prospect, let's see what you can do. They'll throw you in with somebody tough. Hasn't, been called, the, uh, hasn't been called the House of Upsets for nothing. Round nine in the book. A bit busier than round eight, but not all that much busier in comparison to round seven. Nacho Vera staying over there with his young fighter, Marquez. I will take a look at some of the action from the last round, Tom. There's Marquez landing the left. Look at the exchange, but you can see that Marquez punches have the greater effect. Both landing, but Marquez harder. There's Leon's corner. Young 19-year-old fighter, been down twice. I don't know, but I would think they think he's behind. I wouldn't be surprised if he came out throwing left hands like we saw in round number seven. What do you think, Rick? Well, I suspect that that's exactly what he'll do, Tom. Try to close out the show fast. Maybe make something dramatic happen here. At least on my sport, I believe that he needs some real drama yep. and some real heroics here in this last round to make it even close. This is round number 10, but for Leon, it comes out a bit slowly, takes a left and a right, backing up as Marquez scores again. Marquez almost jumping off his feet to throw that hook and land with it. I'm going to say this. Although I certainly don't have an ear to Antonio Curtis's uh, booking of fighters, I wouldn't mind seeing Leon back in the ring again here. No matter what happens in this fight, I think he's fought very well and has got a good chin. Right. His uh, record after this fight, should he lose, Tom, would be, you know, fairly unimpressive. Yeah. Eight and five, but I think he can hold his own with a lot of good fighters. And he's only 19. And as he learns even more and gets more experience, Tom, I think we'll see a, a good record out of Leon. Yeah. Round number 10, they're going the distance for uh, the first time in their young careers. And of course, still to come on what we like to refer to as the most competitive fight card in all of boxing. Every time you see it, while well, we've got Mark T. Sharp Johnson, flyweight champion, and against Baby Diaz. Right hand lead by Leon. Marquez kind of took it, bounced it off his gloves, came back through a little counter punch of his own. I missed my guess badly here, Rich Morata. This is a very quiet tenth round for a guy, especially like Leon, who I would think would have to come out with all guns blazing. Marquez uh, chasing him around, throwing the left hand. 
course, I don't know. Maybe Leon's corner thinks that they've got this thing won or are as close as they're going to get. Content to go to 10. Well, as evidenced by the Foreman Schultz fight, a lot of people can see fights a lot of different ways. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> and maybe, maybe my looking at this fight and seeing Marquez comfortably ahead is completely wrong. Leon landed a pretty good left hand. Marquez trying to cut the ring off and trying to trap him against the ropes. And Leon not doing much here in round number 10. And the crowd really reacting to the inactivity by the guy who's been down twice and who one would think really ought to be uh, going all out. No, well, of course, the crowd hasn't been hit with those right hands of Marquez either. True. They haven't been down twice and they haven't tasted that uh, good right hand effort. Well, for Marquez, uh, a very impressive outing for 10 rounds, we think. Showed us he can punch again, he can box, and he certainly has got a chin that can take a punch because Leon hit him with a left hand in the seventh round. That would have put him a lot of people uh, in the bleachers or in the shower very, very quickly. Judges' uh, cards will be tabulated, of course. Pat Russell will pick them up, and they'll be around to check that, and we'll be back to give you the results of the judges' balloting. We've got a great one coming up. Mark Two Sharp Johnson, Baby Diaz, don't go away. It's fight night at the Forum. This Bud's for you. And by West Coast Detectives. Transportation and protective services worldwide since 1922. Headquartered in North Hollywood, California. Well, we thought it was a very good fight. This 10-rounder in the featherweight division, Marquez, knocking down Leon twice, once in the first, again in the seventh. Took a big left hand in the seventh. Jimmy Lennon Jr. will tell us how the judges saw it. Let's go to the center of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision, and here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jose Cobian, scores it 98 to 90. Larry Rosadilla sees the bout at 97, 92. Marty Salmon scores about 98 to 91. All three in favor of the winner, Juan Manuel Marquez. Marquez, a unanimous decision winner, and I must say that the scorecards within a point on two of them of what Rich Murata had, and the other judge saw it exactly as Rich did, 98-91. So indeed, you were right on again, Rich, and in the late rounds, uh, including the seventh, when he took a real shot, Marquez dominated the fight and overpowered uh, the younger fighter, Leon. And I think, Tom, that seventh round took some of the heart out of uh, Sanchez Leon at that point because he'd had such a good round and he had hurt Marquez and then before he knows it he's on the floor himself and I think that that does something to a fighter. He went down twice once in the first to get in the seventh. Fernando Paramo is in the ring with this talented young featherweight. Let's go up to Fernando. Thank you Tom. I guess knocking the opponent down was uh, easy. How hard was it to take that punch in the seventh? Tumbar al oponente fue fácil. ¿Qué tan duro fue recibir ese golpe en el séptimo que recibiste? Pues, como todos los peleadores, nunca lo esperábamos y fue un golpe fuerte que sí me, sí me puso mal, pero gracias a Dios y a mi condición nos repusimos rápido. He says that, uh, like all boxers, he never saw it coming, but uh, luckily, and due to this conditioning, he was able to uh, take it. Where do you go from here? ¿A dónde vas ahora? Eh, pues ahorita a descansar unos días y volver al gimnasio y a empezar a entrenar otra vez para la próxima pelea. He says go, going back and going to take a few days off, then right back to the gym for his next fight. Muchas gracias y felicidades. Thanks a lot and congratulations. Gracias a ustedes y buenas noches. Okay, there you have it, Tom. Back to you. Thank you, Fernando, and our congratulations to the talented young Juan Manuel Marquez. He's 10-1 and one now with a very impressive win over a tough youngster, Julio Sanchez Leon. The lovely women are next. Don't go away. We'll be back. And these two guys now here in round eight kind of catching their second wind or trying to do so. In a quiet eighth round, after a gopher broke three minutes, round seven. Tom, sometimes after a really vicious round like the last one, the guys will try to 
recuperate a little in the yeah. next round. They may not be punched out, but they may just try to take a little time off, catch a breather, and come back strong for the last couple rounds. I think that's what we've seen a little bit here. They weren't going to come out with another round like the one we just saw. No, I'd have been very surprised had they been able to do that. Round eight, kind of quiet compared to round seven, obviously, comes to a close. If you've ever struggled with a handheld trimmer, you'll love this revolutionary new kind of trimmer on wheels. Just look how easy it rolls on those two big wheels and glides in any direction on this front-mounted mobile. It's perfect for trimming around rocks. As they come out for round number nine, it's scheduled for ten. We'll check Rich Morata's scorecard. He's got Marquez suddenly up by five points now. The last time we checked, I think it was about a point separating the two, and suddenly he's got this card, uh, this fight, swinging heavily in Marquez's favor. Of course, we did have the knockdown in round number seven, and yet you only scored it at 10-9, huh? Yeah, but I've given him several rounds in a row here now, Tom. Basically, because I just think he's landing more shots. The one round that I would have given to Leon was the round in which he was knocked yeah. down at the end. Yeah. Scheduled for 10, this is round number nine. Leon has been down twice, and Marquez showed you that he's not only got considerable boxing skills, but he's got a magnificent chin because he took a shot to open up round seven that would have knocked half the people in the building down. No matter what weight division they're in, and he never went down, but I'm sure he was hurt. But he rallied in round seven to score a knockdown of his own. That's Marquez in black. Good left hand shown by Marquez, who has shown us some uh, nice boxing skills and punching ability in and out throughout this fight, Rich, but hasn't quite been as consistent with it as perhaps we thought he would be, although there was a nice left right combination. In the last round at the start of it, he went a little right-hand crazy, Tom, after landing the knockdown punch the previous round. Good left hand, caught Leon. You see in these exchanges, Tom, Leon may land as many shots as Marquez does, but you can see clearly that Marquez has the harder punch. And also it's evident that as John Bay Ruby pointed out in his notes, Leon has got an outstanding chin. He has taken some on-the-button shots, though he's gone down twice. He has taken some others that might have put him down two or three times more. He's only 19, Leon. And of course, Marquez is just 21 himself. It's a pretty tough fight for these two kids. This young and uh, this early on in their careers. Nine and one is the record for Marquez with seven knockouts. Leon, you can see, has been in with some tough, tough guys in this division. Has a, a record of eight and four, but five knockouts out of the eight wins. And now Marquez keeps sticking that left hand at him as he drives him across the ring and around it. They've fought into one of the few clinches they've had in this fight tonight. Well, as fighters develop time and fight for forum boxing, they will be tested, believe me. They're not going to run into a bunch of patsies to build up a uh, record. Uh, Alfred Ankum, well, our last show, is, uh, is proof of that. You know, if, if you're a good-looking prospect, let's see what you can do. They'll throw you in with somebody tough. Hasn't, been called, the, uh, hasn't been called the house of upsets for nothing. Round nine in the book. A bit busier than round eight, but not all that much busier in comparison to round seven. Nacho Vera staying over there with his young fighter, Marquez. I will take a look at some of the action from the last round, Tom. There's Marquez landing the left. Look at the exchange, but you can see that Marquez punches have the greater effect. Both landing, but Marquez harder. There's Leon's corner. Young 19-year-old fighter, been down twice. I don't know, but I would think they think he's behind. I wouldn't be surprised if he came out throwing left hands like we saw in round number seven. What do you think, Rick? Well, I suspect that that's exactly what he'll do, Tom. Try to close out the show fast. Maybe make something dramatic happen here. At least on my sport, I believe that he needs some real drama yep. and some real heroics here in this last round to make it even close. This is round number 10, but for Leon, it comes out a bit slowly, takes a left and a right. 
backing up as uh, Marquez scores again. Marquez almost jumping off his feet to throw that hook and land with it. I'm going to say this, although I certainly don't have an ear to Antonio Curtis's uh, booking of fighters. I wouldn't mind seeing Leon back in the ring again here. No matter what happens in this fight, I think he's fought very well and has got a good chin. Right. His record after this fight, should he lose, Tom, would be, you know, fairly unimpressive. Yeah. Eight and five, but I think he can hold his own with a lot of good fighters. And he's only 19. And as he learns even more and gets more experience, Tom, I think we'll see a, a good record out of Leon. Yeah. Round number 10. They're going the distance for uh, the first time in their young careers. And of course, still to come on what we like to refer to as the most competitive fight card in all of boxing. Every time you see it, while we've got Mark T. Sharp Johnson, flyweight champion, and against Baby Diaz. Right hand lead by Leon. Marquez kind of took it, bounced it off his gloves, came back through a little counter punch of his own. I missed my guess badly here, Rich Morata. This is a very quiet tenth round for a guy, especially like Leon, who I would think would have to come out with all guns blazing. Marquez uh, chasing him around, throwing the left hand. Of course, I don't know, maybe. Leon's corner thinks that they've got this thing won or are as close as they're going to get content to go to 10. Well, as evidenced by the Foreman Schultz fight, a lot of people can see fights a lot of different ways. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> and maybe maybe my looking at this fight and seeing Marquez comfortably ahead is completely wrong. Leon landed a pretty good left hand. Marquez trying to cut the ring off and trying to trap him against the ropes. And Leon uh, not doing much here in round number 10, and the crowd really reacting to the inactivity by the guy who's been down twice, and who one would think really ought to be uh, going all out. You know, of course, the crowd hasn't been hit with those right hands of Marquez either. True. They haven't been down twice, and they haven't tasted that uh, good right hand effort. Well, for Marquez, uh, a very impressive outing for 10 rounds, we think. Showed us he can punch again, he can box, and he certainly has got a chin that can take a punch because Leon hit him with a left hand in the seventh round. That would have put him, a lot of people, uh, in the bleachers or in the shower very, very quickly. Judges' uh, cards will be tabulated, of course. Pat Russell will pick them up, and they'll be around to check that, and we'll be back to give you the results of the judges balloting. We've got a great one coming up. Mark Two Sharp Johnson, Baby Diaz, don't go away. It's fight night at the forum. This butt's for you. And by West Coast Detectives. Transportation and protective services worldwide since 1922, headquartered in North Hollywood, California. Well, we thought it was a very good fight. This 10-rounder in the featherweight division, Marquez, knocking down Leon twice, once in the first, again in the seventh, took a big left hand in the seventh. Jimmy Lennon Jr. will tell us how the judges saw it. Let's go to the center of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we have a unanimous decision, and here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jose Cobian scores it 98 to 90. Larry Rosadilla sees the bout at 97, 92. Marty Salmon scores about 98 to 91. All three in favor of the winner, Juan Manuel Marquez. Marquez, a unanimous decision winner, and I must say that the scorecards within a point on two of them of what Rich Murata had, and the other judge saw it exactly as Rich did, 98-91. So indeed, you were right on again, Rich, and in the late rounds, uh, including the seventh, when he took a real shot, Marquez dominated the fight and overpowered uh, the younger fighter, Leon. And I think, Tom, that seventh round took some of the heart out of uh, Sanchez Leon at that point because he'd had such a good round and he had hurt Marquez and then before he knows it he's on the floor himself and I think that that does something to a fighter. He went down twice once in the first to get in the seventh. Fernando Paramo is in the ring with this talented young featherweight. Let's go up to Fernando. Thank you Tom. 
I guess knocking the opponent down was uh, easy. How hard was it to take that punch in the seventh? Tumbar al oponente fue fácil. ¿Qué tan duro fue recibir ese golpe en el séptimo que recibiste? Pues, como todos los peleadores, nunca lo esperábamos y fue un golpe fuerte que sí me, sí me puso mal, pero gracias a Dios y a mi condición, nos repusimos rápido. He says that, uh, like all boxers, he never saw it coming, but uh, luckily, and due to this conditioning, he was able to uh, take it. Where do you go from here? ¿A dónde vas ahora? Eh, pues ahorita a descansar unos días y volver al gimnasio y a empezar a entrenar otra vez para la próxima pelea. He says go, going back and going to take a few days off, then right back to the gym for his next fight. Muchas gracias y felicidades. Thanks a lot and congratulations. Gracias a ustedes y buenas noches. Okay, there you have it, Tom. Back to you. Thank you, Fernando, and our congratulations to the talented young Juan Manuel Marquez. He's 10 and 1 now with a very impressive win over a tough youngster, Julio Sanchez Leon. The lovely women are next. Don't go away. We'll be back.